Should I do Japan in 9? Palabas tayo! Hi, I'm Vincent Gregory Yu. Palabas tayo! So we're gonna play a game and this is how it goes. Songs from shows I've written about will be played and I will identify the show for you. Okay, so how do you think you'll do? <laughs> I don't know. We shall see. Grand perfect. Very competitive. Oh good. <laughs> Mama bore me. From where? Spring Awakening. <laughs> Spring Awakening is actually the show I've seen the most times. I've seen it thrice. Uh, first one was Atlantis in 2009. That was the first show I saw in Manila. Because you didn't write about that, did you? I didn't write about that because that was the year I moved to Manila for, for college. So that was the first show I saw. But I remember uh, Joaquin Valdez and Nico Manalo and Bay Garcia. We should come back to the theater now. Yeah, so the three of them, really great. And then I saw it again four years later with Blue Rep. Uh, yeah, um, that was my second review for The Inquirer because the theater section only started in 2012, November. Um, yeah. Uh, Maron Cruz was there as Ilsa, she was great. Uh, and that was the first time I saw Boo Gabonada. He was Moritz. Yeah. And then, so this year, Blue Rep did it again with a different approach, different design, different director, different cast. Not sign language, yeah. So that was a really good show. I think that's, that's gonna go down as one of the best productions we've seen this year. In fact, uh, I saw it the afternoon I saw it. Uh, right after that, I tweeted, hands down, one of the best university productions I've seen. Because it is, yeah. Is this the prologue, Sweeney Todd? Prologue? No, prologue or ending? No, prologue. Sweeney Todd. Yeah. Okay, Sweeney Todd is one of the few shows that. So, 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 so there was Spring Awakening. Sweeney Todd is actually one of the few shows that I've seen more than once, because again, uh, I've only been covering the theater scene for like ten years, a decade. A decade? Wow. Very short time. Yeah, very short time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sweeney Todd was uh, the second show I saw in Manila uh, after Spring Awakening. That was the rap production in 09 with, with Menchu Lauchenko Yulo. That was the first time I saw Menchu Lauchenko Yulo. And I was, so, so you can imagine the kind of standard that was ingrained in me. Like, um, and that was also the first time we saw Adi Himora. Uh, he was Sweeney Todd. So, yeah, so. But this one? This one in um, Atlantis. Vastly different approach again. And um, right after seeing it, I realized this is gonna be a polarizing show. I think this Sweeney Todd will be remembered foremost for uh, Lea Salonga. Yeah, that was a Mrs. Lovett for the Ages. Very committed to the character, um, if only for consistency. Uh, I think she ran away with it. So, I'm a medical doctor by training. I studied in UP, got my MD in 2016. I think it was 2010 or 2011 when I met Gibbs Cadiz, who was uh, for the longest time the writer for theater for The Inquirer. In late 2012, he messaged me um, saying uh, if I'd be interested to write for the paper. So, I won the Palanca in 2009 for the Kabataan essay. Bluebird of happiness. Bluebird? <laughs> Is this Bluebird of happiness? 
by <laughs> by uh, Ronnie for Teach. That's right. Yeah. For the for the theater company. Wait, what's the name of the theater company? Fourth wall. No, it's not fourth wall. Upstart. No, it's not upstart. Um, what's the name of the theater company? Trumpets. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, oh my god, yeah. That was such a fun show. I didn't expect to like it that much because I was going into it blind, cold, had no expectations, and then uh, that was a very fun Disney, Disney-ish scores because normally, you know, we get these Disney-ish scores and they turn out to be um, dead. So that this one was really alive. I mean, I mean, it was very spontaneous. Spontaneous? No, fluid, fluid. That was that's the term I was I'm I'm looking for. Um, it won best musical, I think, best ensemble. Um, best show for children. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and and that was and that was that's an achievement I think because we, it's not every year that we give out best show for children. I think we haven't given it for the last two years. I remember Joel Green's dad was in it and Carla Guevara, La Forteza, yeah. The two of them. And then this this girl, um, the star, uh, Kimi Kochet Chua. Where is she now? She should come back to the theater. Next one. Next one. Okay. Yo. Okay. I don't know. My musical education is all about Broadway scores. <laughs> okay, so tell yeah, me. the Atlantis production. Um, I saw Mickey Bradshaw Volante for the first. No, not the first time. That was this was her first lead role, and I saw it on its last performance actually, and that was after the whole. You know the whole hula baloo with the illness and Kayla having to step in. So I thought I was gonna see Kayla, but then I saw Mickey, which was great. I mean, Kayla was also great. I heard I didn't see her, but Mickey was terrific. That first first note that it's Carrie or something like that. That was that was like whoa. She can. That was like wicked levels. That was how I described it. I think it was. It reminded me of The Wizard and I that number. Let's talk about your current project. Right, so um, every year there's uh, this zine festival, okay, in the, liter in the Filipino literary community. I like to think of it as the cinema, no, the VLF of the literary community. It's, uh, it's called BLTX, Better Living Through Seroxography. Yeah, so it's like this independent expo where uh, writers, uh, put out their own work, usually new work. Some put out um, excerpts of upcoming work. I'm putting out a zine. This is for fun. This is not, um, people have been asking me, is this gonna be a book? It is not a book. This is not gonna be a book. The book will come in the future, but right now this is just a zine. There will be uh, 12 poems, uh, three short stories in it, some new material, but mostly um, Pieces that I've published through the years um, in various venues, Singapore, uh, the United States, um, here in the Philippines, also stories that I've published in anthologies that you know you have to buy as a book. So here I'm collecting my short stories into one zine. So uh, it'll be available at BLTX 9, it's year 9, on December 14th. That's a Saturday. So this expo is a great place, I think, uh, an opportunity for people to just, you know, put out new work, self-publish, make their works available uh, at prices that are way cheaper. It's gonna be at 120 pesos. Next one, bring it on! Oh, that explains it. 
<laughs> I didn't see it last year. I saw it this year. Yeah. I but don't. You wrote about it. I wrote about it very briefly because, you know, there are shows that you don't need to expound on when it doesn't need to be expounded on. Yeah. Okay, uh, bye. Um, POC. POC. Um, Stephen Sondheim, our Lord and Master, Stephen Sondheim. Okay, talk about uh, passion. Okay, um, what I told friends is that was that um, you know I can I can probably retire from writing about the theater if I've seen a good production of every Sondheim show, and at least I've ticked passion off the list. Uh, the two-dimensional element of it contrasted with the moving people who were blocked. I mean, there was blocking in it, and they were blocked like these. It reminded me of that painting in Sunday in the Park with George, Come to Life. Another Sondheim. Yeah, another Sondheim show that they should do soon in Manila. Sheila was a beast. One more. One more. Wait, ano ang title niya? Laman mo makikita Himala! <laughs> Himala! Okay, uh... Himala. Uh, did... I'm not sure if people saw the second version, the second run with, uh... The second run with Mona Lisa's granddaughter, Celine Fabi. Yeah, she, she looked like a statue. Like this Greek statue, no not Greek, she looked Filipino but she looked like a statue that came to life. So there was this, there was this goddessly air about her that I, I couldn't take my eyes off her. I mean, she, and she was, I think she brought that uh, with Acel. Acel got the whole rebellious, confused child element of it down pat. And then, um, oh, 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 and then... Uh, but Celine, Celine, I think, brought this this um, flirtatious element to it, flirting with disaster, flirting with fate, flirting with a man. I mean, she had chemistry with David Ezra. She had chemistry with David Ezra. There was this whole dimension to it that I didn't see in the first run. So I'd like to invite you to BLTX9, um, December 14th, Saturday, at uh, SICA, Tomas Morato Avenue. Um, we'll be there at, uh, from 7 p.m. until past midnight. Uh, I'll be signing copies if you drop by. We can have a chat. We can talk about books, stories, poetry. We can talk about theater, your favorite shows. See you there. That is fun. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, I wanted it to be fun. For more Balabastai videos, subscribe now. Subscribe now. Subscribe now. Subscribe now.